Good morning everybody. Hope you all had a good Christmas. Mum's alright. Haven't really done a lot on the car though, so I'm going to try and start doing a bit. Golf is to one side now. Hooksy's finished the cage on that. I'll do a little bit about that when I get a chance, but I've put it in my garage at home, not in my unit. So I've got a lot more space to work on. Ding. Um, so yeah, I've been doing a few bits and bobs. So I've got, whilst Hooksy was doing my cage, he bent me up this tube for me. Because I'm going rear mounted radiator now. Uh, I just wanted a simpler front end really. So got this bar made up, uh, which is just tied into the chassis legs. Welding's, it's all right. It's hard to say I've painted it, but oh, I don't know. It's not too bad. It ain't going anywhere. And then oil cooler out at the front, and then all this, all, well, the only other thing that's going to be there is power steering cooler, which I'll, that can go wherever, to be honest. Um, I'll figure that out later when the car, when the engine's back in the car. So I've just gotten some upright tube with some tabs that I ticked on. So yeah, that's solid there. Uh, and then I've got my oil filter relocation, which used to be on top of here, facing up, but I'm gonna have it here facing down. And then literally it'll just come straight out into here, which I know is a tight bend, but I'm using nylon. Plus also this is like, it's, it doesn't matter about the movement of the engine from those two, because it's literally a hard mounted point, hard mounted point with a pipe in between, so that's all right. And then the lower one to the engine, I'll have it, you know, a nice length so the engine can move and then this pipe doesn't, it's not under any stress. So, but I mean, that's that same set of worked for three years. So I've basically keeping the same, just making it better and a bigger oil cooler. Um, I would have had my radiator, but Obviously, in my last video, I posted up about my first radiator arrived, and it was like completely bananaed. So I received another one from Mishimoto as a replacement about three weeks later. Um, and I'll put a picture up. And yeah, shit, absolute shit. Um, Driftworks, you know, props to them. They're sorting it out for me. They've apologised, whatnot, giving me a refund because I'm just not going to run it anymore. There's no point. There's t two out of two radiators that are just completely not even in the right shape. So, um, but I actually emailed Mishimoto directly in America and said, like, look, this is my issue. You need to sort it out because you get any more customers like me, it's just going to dent your reputation or whatever. Um, and said, you know, it's obviously an issue with your manufacturing and stuff and it's not great. Um, and their actual response with, it's not to do with us, it's to do with the courier company or the handling company. Somehow they think that a radiator can get that bent in a box stuffed with foam that's not even really. I mean, this is the second box and it's, you know, hasn't been thrown about too much. It's actually all right. So if they think that it's the box and the courier, then whatever. Just won't use their parts. I know I'm using the Royal Caller, but I couldn't really send it back. So. So either use the 220 quid oil cooler, which, well, it's sort of straight, is what it is. Um, so yeah, I've actually gone for a Jap Speed radiator now, so please Jap Speed, please send me a nice radiator because I just want to fit it and start plumbing stuff in. So yeah, whilst I've been waiting for my radiator, which I think should be with me tomorrow, which is ace, because then I can actually fit it. I've actually gone for an MX-5 Mark I radiator. A radiator for one of these. This is my mate Dean's MX-5 I'll share a unit with. Some of you will probably recognise his IS-200 by now with the CA engine. But yeah, I'm using an MX-5 Mark I radiator because A, the core is massive and B, um, they're actually quite a big rad. So, and then I've been kind of preempting for that. So I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna cut into the rear window like some people do and make a big scoop. So I've literally, hole there so that's where the fans are going to blow out and then a bit of ducting here which will get meshed so I didn't want it to look too cut up you know I didn't want to lose that not OEM because it's not but you know what I mean I didn't want to lose that styling and add loads of ducting in the window and stuff like that so I've just kind of gone simple it should work um, and then yeah I've got a new XO racing catch to put on because this one's took a bit of a hammering I think I, I whacked it and cracked the light and stuff and then it's just broke this but they've stood up their time to be fair. I mean, these ones are ace, these bigger ones, highly recommended there. Um, 
so yeah and then exo racing actually do a fan shroud kit with spal fans from art one radiators it's about 160 something pounds but it's like cnc like well no it's not cnc laser cut um nice fan shroud with two spals on it so mount the mount the radio in the boot spals wire it up done and then run the an20s through the car i've also been doing damage repair because obviously i had a bit of a whack at battle royale which kind of hasn't bent the car too bad but it's not the best um my old rear quarter this is actually in half so all this part this black part here that's all duct tape like all of it is actually duct tape and that held up for most of the season to be honest so well done duct tape uh this is just a random spare quarter so i won't mention the company because i hate them they don't exist anymore but still so this isn't genuine Ascura anymore which i'm gutted about uh it's actually a copy it is what it is i could either spend 500 quid on new ones or i've got this one lying here which just does replaces what i need to replace so not ideal but there you go it fits okay no it doesn't it fits fucking awful actually but you know by the time it's painted black and wrapped and stuff you won't see all the horrible imperfections and stuff like that so yeah near a quarter on placement door so obviously people uh well, I'll put a picture of me, me old door up. Um, so yeah, this is my replacement. It's just a spare door I had. So it's all gutted. Um, yeah. And also, when I had that smash, it actually moved the rear door position. So the rear door wouldn't even shut anymore. Luckily, um, I mean, it whacked here. So I think it just moved the bottom hinge because the bottom hinge of the door is like here and the top hinge is about here. I think it just moved it or something but i've managed to tweak it and actually the door profile is perfect and now it shuts perfect again so on to a winner there i mean i thought the b pillar was bent and i was a bit like damn but nah that's all good uh up front just been doing a bit of cleaning really because well as you can see it's still brown but just bits and bobs um but actually got some second hand heat shield off a scrap car um, and just smash that into the firewall tunnel it doesn't look the best but at the end of the day as long as it stops me from getting toasty which it should um, and hopefully my gearbox should still fit in there but even if it touches it it's aluminium so it doesn't it's actually quite flexible and it doesn't make much noise so if anything vibrates again so it shouldn't matter at all really so yeah that's kind of where I'm at other exciting things i got my heads back got my 3uz cylinder heads back from sprint race sprint uh, from sprint race engines in uh, rugby in warwickshire so top guy um i used to sort of didn't work with him but i knew of him so from when i worked for jaguar land rover and he just basically does it on the side there's a lot of cool stuff to do with engines so yeah um but yeah here they are. finished cylinder heads so i'll put a couple of pictures up so i think this engine i think well the engine that these come off had done a ridiculous amount of miles like probably 200k plus and not many services either um so obviously you skim them so they're nice and flat but you'll see with the photo i put up that he you obviously set his gauges to however he does it and then skims across but there was a, a part left in the middle which basically the i think it was like 10 thou or something that didn't touch here because the head's a little bit warped but um i think he only took like 12 thou off i can't remember the figures i'm not like good good with engines and stuff but it's like minimal so it shouldn't affect anything um he's regrounding the valves so i have got the valves but he he's basically ground the valves and then ground the seats as well so and um lap them in so all those should be absolutely perfect now um and obviously i can't really remember what you call this part but he's done that as well uh coolest part is the exhaust ports here so he's actually um cut a lot out of those but we have actually left uh, you can see the witness mark you sort of see where the gasket sits just above my nail there so we've actually left a little bit because we didn't want to go too much and then you end up burning the gasket uh, so we've actually left a little bit but now they are like super nice and the same with the inlet but he didn't actually port the inlet because it's at his maximum anyway 
You can't really see because I'm stood in the way of the light. But he's just basically polished them a little bit up, but still left. Um, I think you do them to like, I don't know, 200 grit or 160 grit or something, because apparently it helps with atomization if you've got a rough inlet channel. I'm not sure. Again, the engine's not my thing. But obviously, if you compare that exhaust port to that, because obviously, well, basically the whole black section there is what he's removed. The difference is absolutely huge. So that should hopefully give me some nice gains. Uh, and he's cleaned them up. I mean, like I said, these heads were absolutely minging. They were black. And, um, and yeah, he's actually done a pretty mega job of cleaning them up without obviously going too crazy. So I think he basically just like put them in a bath sort of thing, like with some fluid in and stuff. So yeah, I'll probably need... Um, I'll need new uh, valve stem seals in there, but now it's basically just a waiting game for parts. So, uh, Newman, it turns out now, we're not actually regrinding my cans because I think it's basically as cost effective to just um, make me some from blanks. So I think that's what they're doing now. They're actually making me a set of cans from, from scratch from some blanks. So that's pretty cool. Um, haven't heard much, but then it's Christmas, so it's probably away so went on cams and then uh need to super tech valve springs valves already back and good I need to order a full gasket set and then i need to shim shim the cams up shim the buckets up um set all that and then i can fit them and then to be honest you know it's just a case of building the engine up and then i'll do new water pump new timing belt and things like that Another thing I'm not going to do is I was going to run a Davis Craig electric water pump, but I'm actually not going to do that anymore because I just don't think I need it. Like, and if I do need it, I can add it in. It's not a, it's not a thing like that's going to affect anything really. All I do is take my air and hose off and put the um, you know Davis Craig pump in line and then wire it in. It's not you know it's half a day's work really, so not the end of the world. And I may as well just try see as it is. Uh, if it's worked like this for three years, then me putting the rad in the back, the bigger rad, more capacity, better fans, better cooling, it should just work better. So I'll probably, I don't know, the Davis Craig's probably overkill, especially as I'm still NA and stuff. So, yeah, I don't think uh, I'll need it. Also had a go at, I've uh, been doing a bit more tigging, or trying to learn. I've been doing pretty well, actually. I've done a few bits for Dean's IS aluminium stuff. Um, and I've been doing stuff on my Golf bits and bobs so I am actually getting there so this was a um, like a coolant catch can that Dean had but it was too big so uh, I mean that's me alley welds now so I did the port on the bottom and then cut and shut it and I'm pretty happy with that that's you know that's pretty mega I think for me and I've only been doing it you know a couple of months really and I haven't even got a pedal so yeah I was pretty happy with that so I decided I'm gonna do my AN fittings but one thing I found is that cast aluminium is to TIG. So this A in 20, uh, let me actually look at it. Um, for some reason, I don't know if like cast has air or something in it. Obviously it must have trapped air, but as you TIG it, it just seems to bubble every now and then. Um, I mean, I think some of these little holes like there, I don't think they're actually holes. I think they're just, bubbles in the aluminium so I've, I could test it I suppose it's like there's one there that looks like a big hole but I, like you say I just I think it's just air bubbles so I think we'll be all right but I mean there's only one way to find out I suppose if I run it up and it leaks it, it leaks and at the end of the day all I gotta do is pull it off and try and reroute it but that was two two laps with a TIG and I just couldn't get it to look nice because, like I say, it was just, it's like something was bubbling out of it. But, here's what it is. I've got another one to do on here, but this is all one piece behind. I'll zoom out. Yeah, this, I've got another one to do here, but this is all one bracket that runs all the way behind here. So, I'm not going to do that until I get my water pump and cam out and stuff and then do it all in one. I can't be asked to start stripping any more down. Um, blanked up. Heater pipe, so now this is obsolete. That makes the back nice and clean. And then hopefully for where I put my AN into the bulkhead here, that it should just give me a little bit more room and 
be a bit cleaner. Um, and then today I think I might try and TIG ANs onto here. I probably shouldn't because it's just, what's the point? But then it looks nice. Mm. I may as well do it, I suppose, but I don't know. We'll see. One thing I do always do on these videos is chat about what I've already done and not actually do anything. So let's actually do something. Um, I don't like doing this because people will judge me work, but whatever, not a genius. Pretty you know, average at doing stuff. So let's this in a new place down here. So first things first, I'm going to make a template for this because obviously I can't see where the holes are with this. So if I make a cardboard one and poke some holes through and then I can offer it up and then I'm hoping to use one of these holes that's already here and then two more and then my plan is to uh, basically drill holes this side so I can poke a socket through with a uh, bolt on it and put it in um, and then I figure out like a I don't know I might put like rubber like a, I don't know like a rubber plate behind it to take a bit of vibration out or something but don't know let's have a go shall we bit of cardboard which is actually a gun target funnily enough but perfect so what I found is get a muddy glove or muddy fingers but I like wearing gloves because it's like minus two at the moment um, and hopefully if they're muddy enough you can sort of um, know if this is a bit too thick but you can mold this round it can't really see but mm. Mold it around the shape, and then you use your muddy fingers, and you can actually make the template. As you can see, I know this is not ridiculously accurate, and there's people probably going to be shouting at me, thinking, "What are you doing?" But I need to find some mud, and then find the holes. if I can find them. Uh, can he find the last one? There we go. There's the holes, and hopefully when I remove it, you can flat it out, and there's your shape. Let's just get the old Scissors, and then cut it out. To be honest, it probably would have been easier not using cardboard and using paper instead. But either way, it's hard, to, kind of hard to show you but does the job and that's what I like so template made like I say I want to try and use one of these two holes that's already here because it just makes sense so make sure it's sort of straight is it like that yes it is Mark up one hole. And there's me, uh, me old. Um, check there's nothing the other side as well. She's gonna like drill holes and then be like, oh damn. So, nah, as you can see, it's literally just a flat piece of metal. So yeah, let's get the drill out. So, me old the drilled. Thing I need now is really an extra long drill bit so that I can go through those holes and out the other side so I know whereabouts I'm going. So give me about four hours I'm going to go and find a drill bit that I probably haven't got. So I'll have to cobble some it together. We'll see. Couldn't find anywhere to prop my phone so I've just done it anyway. So my whole idea of you seeing what I'm doing at the time is not going well. Anyway, there's... Uh, Oh, oh, fell in over, f felling? Falling over. So there's the holes. As you can see, they line up. 
Um, so these I'm going to do to like 12 mil. Oh, Jesus Christ phone. Uh, these I'm going to do to 12 mil because uh, then I should be able to get a 10 mil socket and a M6 bolt through. That's the plan. And people are probably thinking, oh, you've put holes in your chassis rails. It makes it weaker. What about all these then? All the factory holes. Mm, you can't see because it's dark. But anyway, they're full of holes everywhere. Look. Oh God, you can't see there either. Anyway, yes, there, look. Factory rails full of holes. So three more. It ain't going to make sod all difference to me. So we are mounted. So yeah, through those holes there, some cap bolts and we are in place. It's on a bit of a, a weird angle, but that's because the chassis leg sort of mm, does that. So it doesn't look like amazing, but I mean, I, I probably could have done more and a nice amount, but at the end of the day, that's solid and that should work. So the idea is, um, so I'm trying to figure out what was what here. I have a picture I have I refer to. Um, this was out. This port here was out to my cooler, and this one was in from the engine. So I was like, oh damn, they're kind of facing the wrong way. But if anything, I've made it better because I can now do a ninety down. And then that can S bend round into the cooler. And then this, I can have a 90 down to return to the engine. Nice. Uh, and then in from the engine, 90 down, like that. So if anything, that actually works better because all the lines have got a little bit longer, which is obviously more capacity, more cooling, and everything's under less tension. Um, that's going, because that was for rubbish gauge which I'm not going to use anymore and that will get replaced with a new one um, so I'll have oil pressure oil temperature and then it'll all be in one thing and then I won't have anything else so that'll um, be bang on so yeah that's today's hashed job good morning it's a different morning I'm only going to do a quick one today because I can't be asked to film this because it's going to take a lot of figuring out for me me little brain so uh, yeah, I've basically got my jet speed radiator. And it's good, it's actually straight. So uh, at the minute, just mocking up position. So uh, yeah, I'll take this off in a sec so you can have a better look, but just sort of uh, to like me, me stand. Pretty funky I thought, but yeah, so, uh, so yeah, there we go. That's what I'm thinking, nice and simple. Hopefully won't need any ducting from the window and stuff because it's a pretty fat core, to be honest. Um, I could have gone a bit wider. I could have gone for like a Mark III Supra radiator, but because XO Racing do the fan shroud kit for this and because of the cost is 179 quid, I think. It's basically half the cost of the Mishimoto. It's actually straight. Um, it's actually much better quality, I must say. It's probably like, all built in the same factory, but this actually looks pretty cool. Plus, the bonus is it bolts on the end tank, top and bottom. So I should be able to just go like a tube from here and then here, just probably up to the top of the window. You shouldn't need much at the top, really. Um, yeah, just keep it nice and simple. And the other thing I did was made a hash of cutting some bulkhead things. So my AN lines will go through the top and then wiring will go through the bottom. Cause my wiring currently runs like over there and I don't like it. So it's all gonna come through some uh, grommets there. So um, one thing I don't really like is the fact that, you know, the rad hoses are this side. Um, Cause obviously then I've got to run the hose like 90 degree that way, which is fine. But then this one, Mm, don't know, it's mm, not too much of a curve. I think it'll be all right, but it would have been nicer on the back. But then also, I don't know, it would have been accessible, I suppose, but I don't know, you can't win them all, can you? So, okay, so I think I've got the radiator roughly where I want it to sit. So the plan is, uh, I've got these other bobbin mounts, which actually have a little bit of side-to-side -side adjustment, which is good in case I cock up my measurements, which I will. Um, so the plan is to 
get some tube. It's quite thin wall, which is nice and light. Um, and then basically, um, sort of like off here, up. And then I'm going to put a flat plate on the end of the tube at a right angle. Uh, and then that can just literally have a nut on there. Um, and obviously like, I'll try and notch the tube a little bit to fit around here, but this is like substantial stuff, but that's only to hold the radiator. So, and then the plan is because uh, the radiator can basically pivot on this point. As you can see, the rad cap is not really accessible at the moment, but when I've done these bottom bits, I should be able to just pivot the rad forward to a point where I want it. And then probably two more bobbin mounts here and then literally just come off here somewhere because the top isn't holding the weight the bottom will hold the weight the top is literally just to stop it going backwards and forwards so it doesn't have to be too crazy on the top so <sighs> let's get to it uh, right so um, I've made this leg um, which will go off uh, there up to the radiator on that bobbin. Obviously this foot, I'm gonna drill a hole in it, that's for the bobbin to go through. Uh, I did think if I have two male threaded bobbins each side, I'm not gonna be able to fit the radiator in. Luckily, I found a female one. So the idea will be is I'll slot the rad onto the male one, put the nut on, and then I'll put a bolt into the female side. So it should just work. That's, that's what's going on in my head right now. Um, I decided to TIG the foot on, if we can get on that. It's all right. To be honest, I didn't even really clean it off. Um, you know, we've got penetration, so it ain't going anywhere. It's just... Mm. No, no dime stacking here, unfortunately. But, oh well, that's... Um, yeah, and I did, you can't really see it, did like manually notch this tube. I'm, I'm using a screwdriver because it's hard as fuck. And it's cold in here so yeah that's one leg down uh not sure whether to put this one on first then make the other one i think that's probably the sensible option but we'll see okay so we are in position sort of uh, it's a little bit higher this side than that side but i haven't done that one yet so that's why when i do it should hopefully pick it up um but here's the first piece ready to weld um that's on there pretty nice i'm happy with that um yeah uh, that i'm not worried about it's like so i can rotate it afterwards um and yeah it's just sat ever so slightly well, it's minimal ever so slightly high on this one side but i can change that when i do that one so no drama so let's um slug it with a hundred pound special shall we Wee. That's not half bad. We're getting there. I just turned the heat up a little bit, but I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, so um, we are welded and in. Well, the bottom legs anyway. So first leg, not great. Um, ah, it's all right. It's just that top part. Uh, I didn't have my wire speed right, so it wasn't really penetrating very well. Um, it's all right. And then second one. Much better. I'm pretty happy with that. Because it was quite hard to weld because this is like two mil and that's like one mil. So it just wanted to melt the smaller one. But um, yeah, that is the rad freestanding. On the bobbins, uh, clearance, good, straight, yes. And then uh, just got a cable tie on there for now. So that's where I would like it. 
So yeah, pretty happy. And then my bobbin idea worked. So you just slot this side in first and then put a bolt in this side. And there we go. Sweet. So now it's just a case of doing the top ones, whatever I do with that. Um, it should be pretty simple, I think. And then whether to chop this off, cap it, and then put my AN20 fit in the other side and the same on the bottom or leave it and work some out with the hose kind of depends how good my tigging is which isn't very good mm, sketchy we'll see so I've come up with a little weird thing I just kind of winged it really but I quite like it so got a, a load of this aluminium right angle stuff so what I did was like probably could have done that so it lined up perfect but either way I've took a chunk out of it so I could put a bend in it and then that will go on there and that will bolt up through there and then obviously I'll just chop the rest off but I'll TIG that and because it's got a right angle in it it'll be strong as you like and it should look quite nice if I polish that up. Be right. Win. My first rear mounted radiator is uh, mounted. We are actually in. And looking pretty awesome I must say. Like these my little brackets are made but I'll take this off. And there we go. So yeah, bobbin mount. It's solid but has got some movement in it which is nice so yeah here we go next challenge is <sighs> regrettably chopping that off and then blanking the hole chopping that off and blanking the hole and then putting my an20 uh, fitting welding that on the back of the tank and then the same on the other side of there so all this work on this radiator I could probably scrap it in the next hour by welding on those fittings. So wish me luck. So I've decided to do this one first. So I've chopped a 32 mil hole in there and uh, had to linish a bit off this to clear this. I didn't want to grind this away too much so and then that you give it a bit of force it actually sits pretty snug on there now so it's only one thing for it send it Okay, that's weld number one done. It's uh, it's all right actually. There's a couple of bits like oh, zoom in, focus, whatever you want. Um, just there, there. It's just started spitting, so I'm not sure if there's something in the weld or something like that. But generally, eh, it's all right. I'm not going to know. Well, I could get it pressure tested, but I'm just going to send it. So that's it, they're done. This one, uh, if I can get the focus, which can is a lot better. Um, yeah, pretty happy with that really. It's quite tricky welding this, but I'm not sure if it's a material, especially going on to towards the actual core. But yeah, now that is actually it now, I'm going home. <laughs>